I welcome you to our uh, uh, session today. This is the November 24 hour lead in summit. This is a, a summit that is a part of the ongoing uh, five months fellowship national certificate for mediators in Kenya. And it is a summit that is at the closing of the five months fellowship, which kicked off in July. And uh, the, today being on the 19th day of um, in the month, no, the month of November in the year 2021, uh, we are delighted looking forward to the graduation event, which will be hosted um, tomorrow. Uh, for all the fellows as they, uh, as they deliver the inaugural uh, Ignatian lecture on conflict transformation. So this particular session that we are at is the Northwest uh, Conference Reflections Night. And uh, it is a reflections on the conference that was hosted by Canadian and US mediators to which uh, fellows at the ongoing fellowship program were able to participate in. And these reflections will enable us to be able to share on different sessions that we were able to attend. And also just to expand on our appreciation or, uh, uh, of mediation and also the practice in different uh, regions. So with us for these particular sessions for the commentary is uh, Dr. Sharon Sutherland, who is uh, from Mediate uh, BC. And uh, Dr. Sharon Sutherland is also the uh, fellowship co-director for the ongoing fellowship program. The master of ceremony for today's session is none other than uh, Emily Martin, uh, who is uh, who has been journeying with the uh, fellows who have been participating uh, as speakers uh, at the Northwest um, Conference. So Emily Martin, I will kindly hand over this session to you and uh, over to you. I'm Welcome. super well, welcome. Thank you for having us. I'm really excited to be here. Um, you're um, so many of my favorite speakers of the conference are actually here in our session. So, so I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to, for us to celebrate and to enjoy some time together um, as we um, as we do a postmortem and we think about what the conference was, what we liked, um, what impressed us, what what we found interesting, um, what maybe surprised us, and what we what we could have learned. Um, so I'm, I think there's a, a lot of ways this, these reflections could go. And um, I, I think there's a lot of different directions. So does anybody have one to start us off? Any thoughts about the conference? I can start, Emily. Wonderful. Um, thank you very much again for this opportunity. Um, I think the whole thing about the conference was fantastic, beginning with the training on how to make a presentation of uh, six minutes. Was it six minutes or three minutes? I think that was very, very interesting. And I think, uh, I think most of us nailed it. Uh, we were able to do so in the minutes that were given to us. Um, I liked the fact that um, there were very many participants very many streams. In fact, I, I, I got lost trying to get into a stream and I wanted to remain in, in stream A, there was something happening in B and I wanted to, you know, and, um, but all, all in all, it was very, very interesting. And I think what, what um, I think I liked most were the practical examples, especially that like what was given by, was it Uncle Jay about the fences and cooking? You, you know, looking at the whole business of the uh, mediation and the barriers we were trying to talk about. I think he was talking about a fence as, as a barrier and all the things that we come across, you know, when we are mediating. And um, it, it made a whole, you know, um, sense of, of uh, mediation and the, the things that we, you know, take for granted. You know, if you're cooking and you forget to put uh, salt or you forget to season your food, really by the end of the day, that food will not uh, taste good. Um, one other thing I liked is um, the, the, the presentation on um, the, the women and, and the children disappearing. And uh, here in Kenya, we have something like that. Although I didn't quite finish or listen to the end, that's something I would have wanted to listen to the end because um, I later shared with the Medita Wangari about um, our situation here. There's a lot of that and uh, you hear 
um, is somebody, you know, journalist or people in the political field or even human rights defenders on the other side because of what they are trying to um, defend, um, they are taken away and they, they disappear and some of them are found dead. And so I'd have wanted to, to know exactly what really happens, um, especially with the children and the women. I, I didn't quite get to the end, but I think I'll, I'll look at the recordings and, and, and I see really what, what happens. But I think I liked the whole idea. It was very, very well organized. And even the interviews, I think I watched two or so interviews, uh, one with a judge and another one with a mid, with a mentor and, and men, um, mentees and, and how they go about um, mentoring um, uh, you know, young people. And I think it was very well done. I can't wait to attend the next one now that this was a... Uh, the inaugural one, and I'm sure uh, we'll have a lot, a lot to learn from it. And so I want to thank um, uh, our Kenyan, uh, you know, um, pavilion for being out there and for representing really well. And I want to thank Dieta uh, Wangari for providing us with this opportunity. I think uh, if she did not um, bring it out to us there, uh, I will not have known about it. And I think Emily for, you know, taking us through and uh, making it all very interesting. And at one point I was wondering, what did I get myself into? But uh, <laughs> I think as we moved along, it became much easier and, and, and bearable. And uh, Dr. Sharon as well, I know you've been uh, part of the fellowship and uh, really encouraging us. And uh, I just want to thank all of you and the entire team that was behind the conference. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's thank you for those observations and 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 the acknowledgments. And um, I think you you've really highlighted some aspects of the conference that that um, were beyond the Kenyan Pavilion and but really interesting and engaging that I think um, I'm glad you were able to see some of that. Uh, uh, so I'm going to allow Sharon to jump in whenever she would like to add some pieces to it. Um, but um, I do think like one of the things she highlighted was um, was Jeremy's talk and he followed the Kenyan Pavilion. And I, I think his presentation style is really, really interesting. I think he's really good at connecting with his audience. I don't know as a public speaker if anyone else noticed that about how he seems comfortable and connecting and very conversational. Um, but that that's one observation that I, I love to have when I watch him speak. And I think I learn from him as a speaker. So um, thank you for highlighting highlighting that talk. He's the one that talked about food and fences and it started about fences and it went into food and then it was lunchtime. <laughs> it, was, it was a delightful, delightful talk. And um, yeah, and, and that's really interesting to hear a little bit about the missing and murdered um, women and children issue that, that you're having as well. So I think there's, there's a lot to be said about that. So other, other observations, anybody else have a reflection to add to the mix now? Either from the Kenyan Pavilion or for, Patricia, how you doing? <laughs> I'm well, thank you, Emily. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's so much nicer to see this in a more relaxed setting, right? We're not. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So, so, so true. Yeah, and let me also begin by thanking you so much for allowing us to, to come to Seattle. It was, it was nice to, to travel there through the virtual space. And also to thank you for your patience with us as you trained us, as you walked through with us how to present, what to do. I, I think that was uh, a lot of learning and uh, it actually required a lot of patience from you. And when we couldn't make it, you even added us some more time, another extra day or two. So thank you so, so much. And thank you to the whole team for allowing us to come as Kenyans and as a Kenyan pavilion. I uh, truly appreciate that. Um, not to say so much, but first of all, the, the whole conference was very nice. 
The speakers were excellent, all of them, but I'll just pick on one, the white borders. Professor Jones, mm -hmm. I, for me, that was um, an eye opener that there have been those borders all these years, knowing that um, in, uh, in America, we should be free. Those borders may not really be there, but seeing that it started right from the slave trade and the borders that were there where there was a difference between those coming in from the, the European side and the Africans coming in, that was already a border. And uh, then the Chinese, and he really put it so well that uh, including uh, the last president, uh, Trump, and how he behaved. And, and I believe that really touched me because that gave me a history of what really happens in America. So now when I hear about Im immigrants and when I hear about how they are being treated, I see that it is not new. It's something that has come from the past and it, it's, it, it's here with us even today and something has to be done. That really uh, opened my eyes. It was a real eye opener for me. But all in all, the conference was nice and, and you are always tempted to jump from one to the other and, and trying to listen to everybody at the same time. But I'm glad that they were recorded and uh, we can still, we could still see them later. So I'm really grateful, grateful that I was able to attend. I'm looking forward to attending many more. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Minnie. Thank you both for giving such tremendous talks and being so active in the trainings. I mean, I, I, I had some ideas about what we were going to do, but honestly, this, this whole experience was us learning from each other. <laughs> and, and there was, you, you guys were having sessions in between, you were, you were getting feedback from each other. You guys made this a thing. <laughs> you, you know, I, I gave a couple words, I gave a couple pieces, but it, that all was nothing compared to all the work that all of you have done to make this such a fantastic piece and to learn from each other and to build a community and to build support and to build network and to give give each other points of view. Um, so I, I really want to thank you so much for, for enhancing your fellowship with this um, because you're the ones that did the work. You know, Sharon and I set up the stage and Gara, we helped set the stage, but your work was key to all of this. So I, I really, really appreciate that. And, and I wanted to thank you for highlighting that White Borders talk. I thought I thought that talk was, was really, really amazing. Um, and it is, um, you know, one of the things that that has happened in in the United States in the last few years was um, a lot more conversations about our history and how we got to where we are as a country and our 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 thought that we are so free, but how that has been always built on the fact that that this country has never been the land of the free because it's always built on the lie. And it was always built with with slavery, and um, and and it it always is just sort of like this this identity to try to to wash itself away from really what was happening, and the light that's been shine on, shown on that um, that happened in June 2020 with the George Floyd murder um, is been uh, a huge part of the conversations that is happening um, in the United States and continues to happen. And so for me, the White Borders conversation was an extension of some, I mean, he was writing the book probably, before, he was writing the book beforehand, but, um, but I want to acknowledge that this time in history has been a time of study and reflection for not everybody in the United States, but for some people in the United States, because that history is so ugly and is something that, that often Americans don't like to share it to the world. <laughs> Oh, we want to give you we want to say how great we are but but it's but there's just so much to it so that reckoning is those conversations are happening and i i appreciate that 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 was a part i i'm really glad to hear that was a part of this of the conference that meant something to you too um because it was a very powerful thing for me as well so um thank you thank you um i do see another volunteer to give a reflection isaiah would would you like to give another reflection
Oh, maybe he said wanted a book. <laughs> I was reading the chat. I was thought I saw people say I would like to give one, but would like one. But I guess that was more of the book. Yeah, there was so um, uh, there was uh, copies of the book, book available. And I don't I don't know if there still are, but I think Sharon's putting some information in the chat. Um, yeah. Yeah, Emily, there definitely are a few left. So I was I, I started that chain by saying there were a few in the chat. Excellent. So so for folks who aren't seeing it, there are a few. Um, I'm tracking the names of everybody who's saying in the chat that they'd like one. I'll reach out to Wangari to make sure I have email addresses because what we'll do is is we'll send different links to each one of you from CLE. Um, but yeah, there's a, there were a few copies left um, and uh, we can definitely distribute them to folks who are interested here. So please let me know in the chat if you're interested. Now, I kind of want to say that I have never been to a conference it is not normal to have books being given away for free at conferences. This is this is not something that um, has ever happened in any conference that I've been to before. And I want to thank Sharon for this. This was an innovation that that really um, that Sharon Sharon spearheaded. This this is this was the work that Sharon. I mean, Sharon did so much work on so many parts of it. <laughs> but, but one one aspect was the idea of bringing in books and bringing in the fact that we have. Um, speakers who are writing books and want to uh, share those books with the world and and using this as a platform for doing that and making arrangements and making agreements and negotiating using negotiation skills to find the win-win with the author and the publisher and the conference in order to provide more value. So this is an example of negotiation skills on the behind the scene to do something new and innovative and great. Um, and I think that as a community of people who love books and love to learn, this was an enhancement that I was I was really excited about. So I just want to also thank Sharon for for the book aspect of it, because I think it was it was really amazing. It got me a few books myself, Emily. So self-interest in that one. There's a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. All right, more reflections. Who else has a reflection from our, our experience at the conference? Hi, Emily, I could go. Great. Yeah, we're going to hear. And uh, yeah, uh, so um, I, I just uh, noted uh, based on um, the comment, the, the way you introduced the session, you, uh, you said oh, what was interesting, what surprised you, uh, what what like, and I added what are learnings and uh, what am I how what, what was I happy with and uh, just before I go into like very specific on session um, um, yeah, comments on it. So one of the interesting things for me was uh, the theme, deconstructing artificial borders, and I really just asked myself what was that organizing team thinking. I mean, what, what got them there? I mean, it didn't surprise me that Dr. Sharon and Emily were part of it, huh? but uh, uh, <laughs> I think, yeah. And then the other thing now um, was uh, the context that there was quite a large team putting it together uh, from the organizing, the faculty, and then now the number of sessions that were running. And at the back of it, uh, the, 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 it was still, I mean, what did it really take at the back to put this together? Because there's so much valuable learning that was in this. And the learning is not just the session itself, but also at the back, putting it together. Um, why do I say this? Is because then it really brought out the power of collaboration. Because if these sessions um, had been hosted, you know, one in Seattle and the other one in Vancouver, we would still have come. That's okay. Um, and but at, to each of the venues, <laughs> but uh, but I think what what by bringing them the two the two entities actually the, the five the five enti uh, five partners around this program together, I think there's just so much power that comes in. Um, what also was now what surprised me is that these are actually. Um, there, there was um, a strong force of law bodies behind this. That's not what was surprising, but what was surprising is that the conversations that were invited in and that were advanced um, for this particular program were conversations that sounded like an everyday person's conversations. You know, and so when you talk about CLEBC, when you talk about the Washington State Bar. I think in essence, even for us in our regions, we would be expecting that um, the conversations would be in the usual, uh, I normally say, uh, let's talk about cross-border trade, but, but 
what you, we found in those conversations, it was really about the, you know, just the day-to-day -day person. Yeah, what's the um, real life experiences? So the context of what I found interesting and, and surprising was, yes, in terms of the theme, getting to the theme, the very large team that was putting this together, the collaborative nature uh, of this, of this, pro, of, um, of this, um, getting this uh, conference on, and then the final one on, yeah, interesting and surprising tied together was you know just that area of speaking into the, the let me say the, uh, the the everyday things that are happening so with that um i will highlight let me say yeah sessions that were quite yeah or, or, or what what caught me um and i'll just just uh, bullet bullet on them because i i, I think there are, there's some colleagues who yeah will expound on them um yeah uh there was a father and a son who were at this conference that I found also quite interesting. <laughs> and uh, I think the son is a movie star, and then the father was a judge or something of the sort. And I, I, yeah, it, I mean, I'm sorry, was it just a coincidence or I mean, was it deliberate to um, invite them um, for that? And uh, when I say that, is that um, um, listening to the son speaking, um, it surprised me that. Well, he's positioned as a movie star, but when he was speaking, he took us through, yes, now putting in context, because de deconstructing artificial borders, he took us through the journey of him being a young man. Um, his parents, his parents were from, his grandparents were from two different ends. I think they, they were on one side, they were from a very high, high end, you know, using forks and knives. And then on the other, on the other, the, the other uh, grandparents or the other family, the other side of the family was, you know, your regular you're running around um, they're probably barefooted and as he expressed as a young boy now going when school for example school closed and now he was going to his maternal grandmother yeah maternal grandmother's home and now there he's now been um, he can't just sit as he wants sit upright you know and sit upright you know use your fork and spoon and then now when he goes now to his paternal or now where they're staying together um with his uh, with his with his family and it's you know just be a child just be a child it surprised me how um the this conference the speakers were able to deconstruct that theme in, and that's what i'm saying into the, some very regular just very regular basic things because he really was able to bring that out um and then listening to his um the session by his father yukon and um i know i think i've had in several of the sessions you know that um when you're when you're saying yukon and yukon and it really just doesn't wasn't really the grass i wasn't grasping what really this is but what that also caught me when now listening to the to the father and now when you're speaking um yeah when you're speaking uh about the father um, uh, that is uh, Tamo's father, yes, yeah. So um, when he was speaking is just how much we have underutilized what is our local mediation, opportunity for mediation, whether it's around cultural, whether it's around uh, regional areas and just what they appreciate. I think that for me is what really got awakened in terms of that, yes, we have so much we can be able to be able to dig um, into. So those are my, yeah, yeah, just my comments. I, I, I was struck by the session on police mediation. I won't comment on it. I think there's probably one mediator here who may be interested to comment on it. Um, uh, but uh, what caught me with it is especially because, yeah, the police mediation is um, something that um, even for us as Kenya is very important because we move into our elections next year. And uh, whenever we have a situation of elections, I mean, the sec um, mediation, security are normally, you know, or, you know, they could work together, but probably we haven't done the best of it. So that's what um, caught me. So yeah, and uh, with that, um, yeah, so uh, I would like to thank all the colleagues who are at the session. This is not the closing. It's just my now my comments as as, as a speaker at the forum, uh, just to thank all the fellows at the forum uh, because the, participating in this particular uh, uh, conference in the Northwest Conference just elevated our capacity to another level. You know, just working with Emily Martin. If uh, if you have taken time to just look at Ignite Seattle, I mean the work they do. You really have. We really had a master with us, and I really thank Dr. Sharon Sutherland for, you know, just getting us into the the, the conference. And yeah, as uh, has been said, we are looking forward to next year's conference, 
may the theme come out early, we will start researching on our projects. And thank you and God bless you. <laughs> Back to you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you for all those, all those observations. You know, one of the earlier ones you mentioned was the partnership of all the organizations that it took to pull this off. And I want to give us uh, acknowledgement to Vic. Um, so behind the scenes, some of you might have met him. He was, uh, there were a whole staff of people at CLEBC, but he's the one I work with the most. <laughs> and making the, the online aspect work the recordings the 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 you know you, uh, you know i was worried about what happens if we had different connections and he was his expertise when it came to that is something that i was so impressed of and the clebc's trainings that they provided and they support to provided to make a conference like this work i have never seen in any other conference ever um I have a theory that BC has always led the way for remote conferences because of geography and your tech advancing pieces. You are you are ahead of the curve. Um, I attend to American Bar Association conferences, and it does not have the same infrastructure. Um, so I feel like um, uh, there was a speaker and I. We were both in the training in one of the trainings together about the tech prep, and we're like, wow, we learned so much from this. So um, some of the behind the scenes that maybe not everybody saw. Um, was the CLEBC tech aspect of it. Um, and that wasn't something that I knew what we were going to get into until we actually got there <laughs> and it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, the other one of the other aspects that you mentioned was our, our father son combination. And I want to give Sharon some chances to jump in if she has thoughts as well. But I agree, those were both super amazing speakers um, and what we learned from them and what we learned um, from their stories and their backgrounds and how they saw conflict and how they saw deconstructing artificial borders was truly amazing. Um, Tamil may, had made a comment about the power, the, the how important mediation is. Um, and what, on a personal note, the person that hired me as a mediator, um, it, it was 20, 18 years ago, next month, he actually, he, he retired 15 years ago. So he no longer is in Washington state. He lives in California, he's retired, but he was listening to that talk. Um, and that meant a lot to him. Um, and he sent me a note about how important that was and how proud he was of this conference and all the work that we did. So the, for the person who hired me, who started public sector mediation, public sector labor relations mediation in Washington state, um, the fact that Marv sent that Marv um, uh, sent me a note to let me know how important that session was to him was one of my, my personal um, highlights, knowing that, that we've reached um, so many people. So um, Sharon, if you have some, some thoughts. Uh, well, I might just give a, a tiny bit of, um, just because Wangari, you, you made the comment, weren't sure if it was, you know, um, if there was an intention in bringing the father and son together. And I just thought that, that I would sort of say, something about what went into the thought to invite them both. Um, and, I, and I will also comment that, of course, many of you won't realize because we have different last names that I was co-chairing with my daughter. So we already had a mother-daughter team. Um, Darcy Meredith is my daughter. And so we were working together as a team anyway. Uh, but when we were brainstorming and talking about as, as a group, um, that deconstructing artificial borders, we brainstormed all the different ways we thought that that term played out. And so a lot of the kinds of things that came up were, uh, were things like, oh, there's a lot of indigenous communities where borders have gone through their territories. Um, and so we had those literal kinds of things about the impacts and the things that were happening within our area. Um, but we were also talking about things like, oh, wouldn't it be good if we took that more metaphorically and thought about the ways that we think in silos and we don't invite speakers who come from different areas and why don't we think about the storytellers in the world why don't we think about um, artists and performers as people we can learn from so all of those same kinds of conversations were going on um, and all of a sudden both Darcy and I said what about Tamil Pennicut and I'm going to say that everybody else in the room said who or um or if they knew who he was said, but like what, just because you think he's a hot actor? Like, why do you want to, like nobody got it except that Darcy and I had both had the opportunity 
to see him speak in other places. Um, and we'd seen him do really, really serious talks around Indigenous history and his own, his own unique, um, as you pointed out, Wangari, the way that he comes from two sides of, of the Canadian history, but not only that, two sides of the American history as well, because he literally comes from a community, and we, we knew this, he comes from one of the communities where COVID restrictions had actually broken up families because people lived on either side of the border and couldn't visit each other. And so it was quite literally starting with Tamo, but in then trying to figure out, well, how do you get, as you said, a movie star, how do you get somebody who's famous to come to your conference? Um, we started brainstorming what connections we had and all of a sudden it became clear in conversations with others that well, wait, we don't know. We don't know Tamo, but lots of people in the mediation community know Tony, his dad, because his dad is a mediator. His dad is actually extremely well known for the work that he's done in the North. And we just had not thought about that. And all of a sudden it was, well, if we're thinking, we're th you know, because first we were thinking about Tony is, is he a way for us to connect with Tamo and invite him? And all of a sudden we started thinking, wait a second, Tony has done has this amazing experience and background too. Isn't it even more exciting to invite both of them and hear from two sides of the generations? There, so it became one of another way in which we were deconstructing artificial borders. We were thinking generations as borders as well. And what are the differences and experiences that even within a family you might have as you engage with the same kinds of things? So, um, so I'm just I'm telling you probably more than you want, one Gary. But I I, I actually was so thrilled that we were successful in getting both the father and the son, both incredibly well-known people um, in our area of the world to join us and to frame the, the conference in the way that they did. So it was really exciting for us. And not just because Darcy and I are both fans of Tamo's TV work. <laughs> More reflections. Who else has a reflection about the conference, the conference experience, the the speakers, or the the path that we took to get there? I think um, I think for me, one of my reflections about this path. That's why I added it to the mix. Is part of this path is been getting to know all of you. And particular to becoming a giant fangar, fangirl of Wangari. I mean, you are amazing. You are so amazing. I like I, I watch the social media and there's these things that I'm involved with, but you have so many other aspects of the program and the network and building this. And I mean, you are using all of the modern tools. You're using Clubhouse and you're using all of the social media and you are building and you are connecting and you are making things happen and you you're, you're amazing <laughs> you are a superhero and i am so glad that this conference let me get to know you and get let me work for me work with you and let me learn from you you are are so impressive and and this piece today and all of this this is this is so much of this um Oh my gosh, I am so impressed. So I just gotta say, like, that's what I, I became is Wangari fangirl completely. Um, this was amazing. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate that. So I just gosh, I, I'm I and I'm always so learning about how you know, and you know what you're re also really good at? I know you're a good mediator because you're good at the ask. Good mediators know how to ask people and get them to say yes to stuff. And look how many, you have so many different programs going and how can you make all of that happen? And, and you know, it's intimidating to call somebody up or email somebody and say, hey, what about, can we do, can we make this? Are you interested? And you, you are so skilled at it. You are so wonderful at doing that, that you are. I am learning from you. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to figure out how to say this. Or I want to figure out how to approach somebody. And I just like, I'm going to channel her. I'm just going <laughs> to, just going to do, what would she do? And I will, and I will learn from that. So I feel like as mediators, um, there is a piece of mediation that we can learn from this model that is amazing. And your organization and your project management and your scheduling and your all of your all of your pieces to make something happen. This is just 
this is a digital space. Here we are, you know, we're not even in a room together. And look at what you've been able to create. So I just, I just can't say enough <laughs> about how impressive and how much I learned and I am inspired from you and what you have brought um, to, to the, the world of mediation. So thank you so much. So if I may, Emily, and um, uh, with that, uh, I do I do appreciate your remarks and receive them. Uh, and uh, most of all, uh, I think um, when we uh, kicked off this particular work, uh, the vision of it is really what has kept um, this work going. Because I mean, we really do not even have the capacity to to do that. But it's just the vision of. Um, of this particular work. And the vision um, has been centered on building, you know, Africa's largest platform of mediators. And not just for the sake of having a platform, but it's for the, it's for the purpose of what it can do to our societies, to our families, you know, to just our, our nation. And um, for as long as that is still not yet, that continues, you know, just to, to be, it's still, we haven't even scraped it um, as yet. But I think also what um, <clears throat> continues to inspire the work is as we have colleagues who um, come on board and they are in alignment with that vision. Because that vision is then what is really the driver of, you know, just everyone who's around um, the work. Um, what's been quite interesting then now as we've opened up with the digital space, is that we've been able to have people who are not even within our context, within our vicinity. And that vision aligns with what is their vision for what mediation can do. So it means they even had a bigger, a bigger vision, you know, a global vision. For, I mean, perhaps for us, we were sitting, say, in Kenya and Africa. By the time we're interacting with Dr. Sharon, it means then, you know, her vision has, was then was really what can mediation do to the world? By the time we're interacting with you, you know, Emily Martin, and you know, we uh, by the time we inter interact with Matt, I mean, who was also with us um, on the session with Tercy, and also just with um, other colleagues um, um, uh, beyond even this, um, other people who've also um, uh, come and interacted with us. It means that, that they actually had a bigger vision than us. So it means we actually now the ones who are running into that uh, um, in essence. And I think that really helps to propel um, the work. Um, just as I said earlier that, um, as we had the colleagues, um, you know, get into the sessions when we were doing the training sessions for the Northwest Conference, I mean, it would really just awaken that this was never in our sphere. It was, and, and, and you know, it was really never in our sphere, but then tapping back again into what the vision started as a tech justice innovation. And so being able to now have these digital tools to make use of is just now the alignment um, of that. So Emily, I appreciate your um, yeah your remarks. Um, the, yeah, now that is also just to let you know that um, you also inspire us um, for all of you yourself and uh, Dr. Sharon. Dr. Sharon, I think that's another that's a, that's a song. We will make a song for her. Uh, that's another one. <laughs> yeah, you you inspire us, and it really also propels. But I think also the acknowledgement, the the peers, the fellowship program has just. You know, if, 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 if there was a regular aeroplane and the Boeing is probably the master of it, the, the fellows at the fellowship have just Boeing, you know, the mediation work and the opportunity can, we can, that we can offer. So thank you, Emily, and back to you. Well, do we have any other reflections that we would like to do? Anybody else have a thought, a question? Um, I see Joyce's hand up. Oh, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. My name is Joyce. Uh, when all this began, I wasn't very really sure I'd be able to follow it through. I recently became a grandma, and so every weekend my grandchildren come home. And so I'm doing this right now in the kitchen because they're all over in the house. Nevertheless, I have learned a lot. Uh, when this began, I wasn't very sure that I would keep up. But with time, I got so interested, I learned a lot. 
one of the big challenges that was thrown to us was to go to the chief. That is a local administration in your neighborhood. Uh, I'm a trained school teacher, but I also do business in Nairobi, in a place called Isili. Isili is purely dominated by uh, Somalis. And recently I have found myself being called out to mediate Somalis and their workers. And I have thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I also went to the chief, introduced myself, and every Tuesday I volunteer at the chief in a place called Mulango Kubwa. Those who are from Kenya, they would understand what Mulango Kubwa would mean. It's near one of the biggest slums in Nairobi called Madare. And so the matters there are so much, and the stories are horrendous, um, move you to tears. Mm -hmm. but I have engaged with young people and I have thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I'm in the process of hooking them up with jobs in the best way that I can, and then look forward to go and do pro bono mediation at the chief's camp every Tuesday. And I'm also having somebody who has just recently become a mediator shadow me as I do it. And so Wangare, Sharon, and the rest of you, may the Lord bless you. This has been awesome. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Pulling, pulling that bigger vision of the of where mediation go and then showing exactly where mediation could do things and make a difference and make connections. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pauline, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi. how are you? I am good, nice how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Yes. Thank yeah. you, thank you for this evening. <laughs> wow, amazing, I just want to say how I am amazed of what happened. The conference was amazing. You remember I was lost in the conference somewhere. I was <laughs> wondering, where am I? Finally, <laughs> some people came for my aid and brought me to the right place. I have never forgotten how nice it was. Thank you very, very much, Emily. It was amazing. I've not attended a conference like that. So it was my first time to be on a Zoom conference where you are from one room to another, and then there are people who are assisting you. So I really enjoyed it. I was, I was wondering where I am, where am I? And all of a sudden, I was fixed to the right place. I have not forgotten. So thank you very much, Emily, even for the walk with us. Thank you very much, Shalon. And do not forget Wangari. If it were not for her, me, I would not have been here. She is, she is really an encourager. And I echo the words of Emily and Shallow. It's amazing. She is a really an amazing uh, coach, an amazing um, uh, mediator. Because, you know, uh, she worked with us. I could not have done it if it were not for her. I had already, I was almost giving up. I was wondering what is it all this about? I don't know how to, where to, to press, what to do. You know, I still learned and, and she was telling me, you learn on the way. That is very amazing. It's very rare people encourage others like that. So I learned a lot because of that encouragement of Wangari, just press and when you do this, it is going to happen. And it happened. I thought now when I'm using the computer, <laughs> the day I decided to use my laptop, is the day I got all the confusion. I didn't know where to press. <laughs> but I thank God because of that. So thank you very much, Sharon, Emery, Wangare in Kenya. And we are waiting to, for greater things to happen. And I think I'm better loved than before. In fact, I don't know, but not because of fellowship. I have been doing a lot of mediation with the, with the judiciary, actually. I have three cases which I am working on. So I think this experience is giving me, and I'm, I'm dealing with labor matters, and that is what I like doing most. So uh, my, 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 my experience has increased, and the skill, I have sharpened my skill because of you people. So we are very, very grateful. And uh, we are, I'm, I'm personally very, very grateful for three of you because of what happened. So may God bless you. Wangari, don't keep quiet. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you. I've been wondering where you are. Mm. Sush, 
Emily, you're the best. Say hi to those people. I can't even pronounce their names. So say hi and you tell them we really appreciate. They are the names I can't even appreciate. And I listened at the anyway. It was good. It was good. It was awesome. That is the word. It was awesome. Yes. Thank you very much, Emily. Shalom. I hope you are well. Yes. Thank you. The challenges are there still, especially on my topic. But we, it is the beginning. We are working on that. We will walk a journey because I think whatever I was talking about on the, um, uh, on the conference about the bank's employee and employer, it is a journey. It is not an event which can happen like, just like now. But it is, you know, we will continue for the awareness. When you are here or we hear anything, we encourage and we, we recommend for mediation despite what other people think, but this is the best way to go. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Polly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for being such an awesome mediator and such an awesome fellow. And thank you all for, for doing all of this. You know, we are in our final few minutes of reflection. And I think one one sometime, one way sometimes in meetings was um, sometimes we talk about what we liked and, and what we learned, but but sometimes we end with a question of what if. Like, and I think we've started thinking about that. What what does the future hold? What what could happen next? Um, and so I kind of wanted to leave on the note of like the what ifs, and maybe somebody has ideas of what if, what if we did? I don't know. Um, so if anybody wants to fill in the blank, or if everyone wants to just think about it, like what? I don't know. Do you guys use the word what ifs in in your mediation? I use it all the time. What if we did this and this? Would that work? What if we did this? I I know you said you can't do. I know you said this is impossible to reach an agreement, but what about this? What if we did this and this and this? Would that be an idea that might be a, an approach? So what if creates hope and it creates space and it creates a dream and it creates the opportunity to do different things? So what if? Any more final thoughts? So, um, Emily, what if we take a break now? And uh, <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> yes. So, we will uh, officially close off uh, this uh, particular session uh, with uh, the Kenyan National Anthem um, in Kiswahili. Um, colleagues and friends, we have our next session starting off at 8 p.m. East African time. And uh, uh, after us being able to have the uh, the uh, this particular session we're going to the next session which is on advanced uh, speaking skills you won't be there that's our movie night at the uh, leading summit as we progress on towards um, the graduation uh, dr sharon would you uh, want to tell us something about uh, uh, the canada either anthem or you know something or or itself just before we do the kenyan one dr sharon um, sure, I can. I, I what I will say, I'll I'll post the words for the Canadian national anthem, and it is something that, interestingly, we mostly focus on doing at sporting events. We used to sing it all the time, starting things out, but we have um, at, in Canada these days. There's a lot of conversation about the appropriateness of the Canadian national anthem and our celebrations of Canada Day, our celebrations. Um, and, a, and a real recognition since our Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, report um, five years ago, really identifying the challenges that we have in celebrating a country that is based on colonialism um, and the colonial history of, of Canada. So we continue to sing the song when we start sporting events, but we rarely utilize it in the same way that you do with the, the Kenyan national anthem. Instead, it's what we do, um, and often beginning and end of events is, and those of you who were at the conference will, will know, we often do land acknowledgements. So it's more common for us to speak about and recognize, specifically because of the intent to speak about the truth of the history of, of our land, that we are all on stolen lands, that there are that the while I happen to be on lands that were um, ceded in a modern treaty by the Tawasan First Nation, they're nonetheless lands that 
um, were essentially stolen long before the treaty was reached and utilized for industrial purposes, destroying the um, foreshore and what it was an incredibly, incredibly wonderful area for um, particularly, I'm on the seashore, so it was particularly a, a, a beautiful area for um, oysters more than anything else and the salmon runs. Um, and those were taken away from the First Nations people who lived here. So we're, we would more likely speak to that. And Wangari, the common thing we would do at the end, um, we would often challenge each other to think about what steps we are personally going to take as an active step towards reconciliation so that it's more meaningful than just saying, I am on these lands. I, I, I learned the name of the nation that used to be here, but I still continue without thinking. And so it's really common for us to invite people to think about what are they going to do as an act, as an act towards reconciliation today or this week or in the future. How are we how are we taking action? Um, and uh, and so I would uh, I, 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 I'm not going to make that call to everybody here. You're in very, very different situations than I am. But I am going to say that that one of the actions I'm taking right now is recognizing all of that, speaking to it, and I am actually meeting on Monday with a group of, of mediators to develop um, and put out um, a, a workshop for all mediators in British Columbia on how to deliver land acknowledgements and how to create action plans for actually different types of reconciliation within their communities. So, uh, that's what I'm going to be working on today is some of my own plans for helping uh, helping all of us to take action around reconciliation. There you go. That's that's something you didn't want, but I've I've posted I've posted O Canada as well, and everybody here knows for sure they don't want to hear me sing it. <laughs> oh, great! Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, and also um, that uh, we appreciate the, the 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 additional value that you've brought in as you've just explained to us. Uh, uh, how how the, in Canada you relate to the national anthem, and then also um, it tells us that sports is probably still a very nationalized uh, 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 area of uh, of life um, that's very still very shared. Um, and uh, what you have introduced to us is uh, the question: What active steps are we who are here now uh, taking towards? taking mediation to the grassroots. And I picked that uh, from uh, mediator Joyce Kingori's uh, remarks when she's uh, talked and said that she's uh, actually um, at one of the very local um, uh, uh, facilities to provide services to the grassroots. So that's what I think we can pick from uh, from yourself, um, uh, Dr. Sharon. And uh, let's remember that uh, from Emily, we have picked what if. <laughs> Yeah, what if? Eh? So we will have the Kenyan national anthem uh, in Kiswahili, and we have the five minutes break, and we can come back for the movie night uh, with Emily Martin um, and as we advance on. So with that, um, the Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa, Emu Ngungu Vietu, Ilete Baraka Kwetu, Haki Iwengao na Mlinzi, na Tukai na Undugu, Amani na Uhuru, Raha Tupate na Ustawi. Colleagues and friends, I thank you for joining this particular session as part of the uh, November 24-hour leading summit on the 19th day of November in the year 2021. And uh, this was our session on uh, the reflections on the Northwest uh, uh, Collaborative Futures Conference, which was hosted in November. And we had fellows at the ongoing national fellowship participating. We thank uh, Emily Martin, who was at uh, the MC for this session and also journeyed through with the fellows to prepare for the conference. We thank Dr. Sharon Sutherland, who's also with us um, at, uh, at this particular um, session. And uh, we also acknowledge Matt and Darcy, who also uh, worked with the team. So we'll see you then in uh, five minutes. And colleagues and friends, that will be at six minutes past 8 p.m. See you then. Thank you. <laughs>